and my uh, streamliner that's been languishing in my garage for quite a few years now. A little bit different to what it was when it first began. Now to be a three-wheeler, they will be a little bit further apart than that when finished. Need to make a little bit more room in this garage, shifting obstructions. It was originally built with three antiquated motorcycle engines in it, but who on earth would be interested in sponsoring a machine with antiquated Triumph engines in it? I had lots of firms gave me different parts and bits and pieces, but very little cash. I had some cash off Stellrad, but I'm not going to go into too complicated details, but venue uh, was a problem due to the place that I had permission to run up Fairford started flying 24 hours a day and the noise upset the villagers and they didn't want anything else running up and down it so eventually the project bit the dust and has lain dormant for quite some time so I've taken the antiquated Triumph engines out and I'm fitting a Rolls-Royce Viper jet engine. This is the way into the cockpit. Now I did uh, originally have a sort of a lying position a la motorcycle-ish sort of position but I was quite a bit younger then and uh, my neck muscles I think were a bit stronger because it's uh, quite aching of the neck to lie in that position for very long so I might just change it to uh, a sitting position which might entail some uh, tubular sort of alterations here and there I'm hoping the headstock won't be in the way it wasn't when I was in the lying position close up to it if you could look around it your eyes just ignored it but I may have to uh, perhaps do some leading link or hub centre steering set up or something University of Salford did wind tunnel tests on a uh, one fifth scale model to make sure it was safe but the speeds I was envisioning at the time can be uh, achieved now on the modified uh, road going motorcycles so it was time for some uh, drastic alterations to it and it's going to become a three wheeler Trev might like that. That's a picture of what it looked like before I removed the back end, which is part of it would unbolt and the rest had to be sawn off, unfortunately. Of the original control panel, you might wonder why there's three, there were three rev counters, and the idea was that uh, if a coupling chain snapped between uh, two of the engines, and I would see the rev suddenly shoot up and know a chain had snapped just for safety reasons and be able to shut down so that was the idea of three rev counters it's a Rolls Royce Viper jet engine out of a um, a jet provost trainer plane I think there's about 1600,000 pounds, uh, 1600, uh, pounds of thrust from this engine and that's without an afterburner there's no afterburner on this as far as I'm aware I've got all the documentation for it, it's a 60s engine so it hasn't been run for a while just have to be careful that it doesn't disintegrate don't want pieces of turbine blades flying out the back I've got to suitably bridge the gap now with some more uh, tubing probably heavier duty uh, tubing than what I've used there I used Reynolds 531 tubing on this frame, it's pretty strong 
but uh, it's not available these days generally. So I'm going to have to make do with mild steel and uh, it's going to have to be a bit more robust where this engine is. I'll have to make a hoist affair in my garage. I've got an extra support there to uh, lean in against the wall at an angle but to put in underneath directly where the block and tackle is just to stop any slight bending movement of the main lifting beam. I don't want to use a uh, car engine lift on wheels because it would be in the way of my uh, working on the framework. Most frames uh, using 531 tubing in the 70s and 80s were bronze welded. Um, it's not the same as brazing, people call it brazing but it's not the same. Um, but there'll be a little bit more electric welding I think on this uh, back end especially where the cross axle is going and I'm going to make independent swinging arms on each side be an octogenarian by the time I get it finished but uh, one has to have something to aim for in life not like some people I know nearby that uh, might as well just be sat in a field with their heads showing vegetables I have to have some aims and goals I've been third quickest in Europe on my drag bike back in 1968 all home built. I've been very close to 200 but not quite managed it yet on the booster it's not quite as easy as one would think. I've not really had the right conditions yet to press that nitrous button because I was banked over to 190 odd miles an hour and uh, I didn't fancy it so I shut it off. But sooner or later the conditions will be right and I shall do it and uh, then I'm going to be plodding on with this and see what sort of speed we can get out of it. Hopefully can do some test runs on a runway and then maybe now that the uh, uh, record club and other clubs are running events on Pendine Sands, if the conditions were right, maybe could run it there, who knows. I'll do an update when I've done a bit more work. Cheers for now.